Welcome to the InsureTech Show, where today we explore the exciting world of artificial intelligence and its impact on customer experience in the insurance industry. We have a fantastic lineup of guests who are experts in their fields, and they're here to discuss the latest developments and innovations in this exciting area. Joining us on the show today is Bastian de Goy, an insurance industry leader at Instabase, a Californian-based company that specializes in intelligent automation. We also have Danilo Raponi, the group head of innovation at Generali, and now they're one of the largest insurance companies in the world, so I was desperate to get their perspective too. And also, we have Simon Pink, the UK's head of emerging technology at QB Ventures. Now, today we're going to be discussing how artificial intelligence is revolutionizing the insurance industry, from streamlining back-end operations to improving the customer experience at the very end of the chain. Our guests are going to share their insights on how AI is changing the game for large insurers like Generali and QBE, and also finding out the benefits and challenges when it comes to actually implementing this technology into their businesses. So if you're interested in learning about the cutting edge technologies that are transforming the insurance industry, then sit back and enjoy the show. It's time to deep dive into the world of AI, customer experience and insurance with our expert panel. Is artificial intelligence going to be able to be the key that unlocks the insurance industry and makes it become more friendly and a positive experience? I would certainly say that it can be an ingredient. Right. Um, uh, nothing ever is a key. At the end of the day, it's the, the whole organization that has to come together in order to enable like extremely good customer experiences. But AI can be a great help if applied correctly. Um, so the types of areas where I see um, AI having a dramatic effect is as follows. Um, what we have seen over the last few years is that a lot of insurance companies, they have moved towards app type experiences to make it easier to file a claim. And so for example, what happened is that an insurance company says, hey, um, take a picture of um, you know, your, your driver's license or a passport as part of a KYC process and you know, we'll, we'll automate, that. we'll process you know, your, your claims process. Amazing. Now, what happened in the background though, is that a lot of those pictures and uploaded information were still processed manually. So that in the end, you would have like a app experience, but then you will get a message that it takes a couple of days before the insurance company comes back to you. So it's like a front end lie effectively saying, oh look, it's gonna be glorious in AI very quick, but in reality, you're still waiting around for days. Exactly. And so where technology is now catching up to all of this is to actually deliver end-to-end -end customer experiences um, that are delightful without hiccups. Um, so now you're able to say, okay, um, take a picture of you know, the claims document or a passport or a driver's license. And in the application, with help of companies like Instabase, are able to understand those documents in a very similar way that a human would and automatically detect for errors or omissions or changes, or even fraud detection. Um, and what that means for the customer is that they would be prompted if something is missing so that you don't get like a notification a week later that you know actually you really should have uploaded the following document as well and you know we haven't actually even started processing your claim i'm intrigued to find out how to set the scene almost how you see artificial intelligence and and deep learning um, impacting the insurance industry maybe over the next two to five years yeah, I think it's difficult. Crystal ball gazing is always tricky, isn't it? But yeah. I think if you sort of break it down into two bits, there's how how is artificial intelligence going to um, help us um, do our business better? Yeah. Um, and sort of internally within our organisation, and equally, how um, how is it going to actually help our clients in the industry as, as a whole? That kind of external view. I think internally we're seeing some great examples emerge and, and become more uh, robust in the context of claims handling and taken on loads of, uh, being able to ingest unstructured data, claims, written documents, um, extract the salient features, and then start to put them into that sort of workflow, if you will. Yeah. Um, and that, that will continue to emerge. The, you know, the confidence level in some of that, the accuracy is around about 90% now, which is really high, and that's, you can start to put some trust behind that. How it helps our clients, I think, the in, and the industry, 
I think that's quite an interesting one. So we're seeing we're seeing new risks emerge, and I guess the example I go to is the likes of automated vehicles. So this is a this is a vehicle that's this is a machine that's driven by AI. Yeah. How do you ensure that, um, and how do you how do you understand how that's going to behave and what the risks are? And two thoughts on that. One would be um, the uh, if an automated vehicle has an accident, as an insurer, you've covered that to some extent, you're going to get a wealth of data, you're going to get all the telematics data, all the video data, or the audio data possibly of that particular event. How are you going to process that at scale and deal with that? So there's a challenge there that I think we have to deal with. Um, and the other aspect, actually, there's a, um, there's a great company that's gone into Lloyd's Lab, Simulatic, I think, uh, who have got a smart piece of tech. There's no driver history with an automated vehicle. So when you and I apply for our, for our car insurance, we have a driver history. and There's an evidence of how you drive. Uh-huh, and you know, no claims, discounts, and all that stuff, and it's painful, really painful. But actually, with automated vehicles, you don't have that. So how do we, how do we know that that vehicle is any good? And there are companies emerging that are now able to take that sort of digital twin, if you will, of the vehicle, the digital twin of the environment, which is going to operate, and play scenarios through that to sort of simulate how the vehicle would behave given a certain set of events. Um, and that becomes, um, and so that's quite powerful. But again, it, that as an industry, we're gonna see more of that type of, I'm gonna say digital twin to be generic, but more of that ability to use AI and digital technologies and data in smarter ways for these emerging risks, really. Before we look at back end, let's look at the front end. What does it mean for, what does artificial intelligence mean for customer experience and insurance? It's a great question because customer experience insurance, as you, as you know, it's still lagging behind other industries, right? So that's something that we really need to, uh, to work on. And artificial intelligence can help us a lot there, right? So, for example, you know, by, by uh, automating some, some processes, like, for example, when you have like a small uh, motor claim, right? If you can just send us a picture of the, 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 the small uh, uh, accident you had, then we process that in real time and we can just, you know, reimburse you the, you know, 200 quid or whatever it is. In, uh, you know, that after two seconds, I think that's much more rewarding ah, experience than yeah. having to call someone and explain what happened and, you know, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think this is really helping a lot. I mean, that's fascinating to think that we can literally get to those speeds because the payment rails are there. It's really now just kind of connecting the dots, right? We are, you know, we're experimenting. Where actually, we have a solution in, in some of the generally countries where really if you have uh, if something happens to you and, you know, we estimate the, the claim to be less than 2,000 euros or pounds or Swiss francs or whatever, that, that happens, right? You just send us a photo and we, no one sees anything, right? It's all automated. You know, the artificial intelligence recognizes, you know, what car it is, where the accident was, what needs to be repaired. It estimates the number of damages. It says, oh, here, here it is. Would you like either the the man in your bank account, or would you like other, the repair shop coming to pick up your auto, auto and, and sort it out? You know, and you can just click there and it's all done. That is absolutely amazing. And, you know, as a, a person that, you know, might actually have to one day, you know, be on the side of a highway, of a motorway, thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to afford this? That must be such a change in, like... A relief. What, yeah, a relief and thinking of changing your perspective of the insurance industry. Absolutely. That's that's really what we're trying to do, right? Really, you know, it's really the evolution of, of a relationship between customer and, and insurance company yeah, into a relationship, right? It's yeah. not anymore a commercial thing only, right? We, we, you know, we say we want to be lifetime partner, right? It's a very ambitious thing to say, perhaps, but really trying to get there. And there, the technology helps us a lot, of course. Can you tell us how artificial intelligence and maybe by using Instabase, insurance companies are going to be able to help offer their clients help in times of need before it's even happened? Well, you're, you're spot on, right? So, and at the end of the day, insurance companies are data processing organizations. The reality though is that a lot of the data that sits inside of an insurance company is not actually being used. Um, and so when we are looking at claims data, for example, one way as we discussed is to make that claims process operationally more efficient and get to payouts faster and things like that. Yeah. But now take that same short-term disability claim. That data can also be used to understand whether that short-term disability claim is going to develop into a long-term disability claim. Because the data science teams of um, the clients that we work with, they use that same rich claims data in order to do predictive modeling. Predictive modeling they weren't able to do before because they didn't have access to the data that sits inside of those claims documents. So now the data science teams of those live insurance companies, 
they take the data coming from short-term disability claims, develop predictive modeling so that they can actually intervene at the time that a short-term disability claim comes in with certain characteristics that seems to make it probable that it turns into a long-term disability claim to make recommendations to that customer to take the right types of interactions to actually prevent that from becoming a long-term disability or alternatively for the insurer to be ready for when that happens and to reserve appropriately and make sure that they can actually pay out a long-term disability claim. We've talked about the front end for the customer experience. Let's look at what, how it helps you and your colleagues really adapt and become the best insurance company in Europe and abroad. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's essential, right? You know, one thing of insurance in general as well, you know, we've had loads of uh, legacy systems for a long time, which were a little bit of a hindrance uh, for the development of new products and new processes and, and things. Right? So by moving a lot of things to the cloud, for example, by adopting, uh, you know, um, data analytics processes within the company, again, uh, systems of artificial intelligence that speed up the processing, for example, of some of our um, legal things or procurement processes, right? I mean, it has made everybody's life much easier and that means right you know sometimes people fear automation because they they fear it means oh people are out of jobs no people actually can do the jobs more meaningfully now because they can actually use their human capacities where technology doesn't get to 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 complement what the technology has however prepared for us right how can enterprises unlock the full value of ai yeah that's a good that's a good question and because we're all we're all trying it and we're all trying to do it um there's a few there's a few golden rules to this, um, and they're not. It's not related to AI. It's related to the execution, and delivery, and planning, um, like any kind of significant technology project, really, which is um, focus on the business problem, be clear, crystal clear on the business problem we want to solve, uh, and then whittle that down to actually what do we need to prove, and just work to prove that sort of that MVP, that minimal viable product. We all talk about it, but too often we start these projects and we get carried away with ourselves think function and, and excitement kind of builds in and suddenly we've got an undeliverable project and we don't achieve anything. So um, keeping it small, keeping it focused, getting to the key proof points and then building it up from there uh, is what I've seen work um, work actually really effectively um, over my little time working in this uh, with this technology. Technology has changed very dramatically. Um, even over the last 24 months alone, the application of what we call deep learning models has allowed us to do dramatically much more with the understanding of highly complex and varied documents and other types of information and data inside of the insurance organization, much more so than, uh, than previously. And so basically, for the first time, um, technology is able to start really helping the underwriter and the claims adjuster in their work, eliminating or dramatically reducing all of the more mundane, boring, data entry, simple processing type of tasks that they ordinarily do, so that those adjusters can now focus on consumer customer interactions, that the underwriter can focus on the art of underwriting rather than on you know, boring data entry type of tasks. That's about all we've got time for in today's episode. I want to say a massive thank you to our guests for participating in today's show and sharing their insights with us. A massive thank you to you, our viewers, as well. You can catch the rest of the series and so much more over at ffnews.com and, of course, YouTube, but especially LinkedIn, where you'll see me, Doug McKenzie, in the comments. Thank you very much and goodbye.